Hello and welcome once again on a video tutorial series for Microsoft Test Manager by One Test Solution. This is part 2A. In this session, we will talk about building uh, test suites in MTM. So let's uh, quickly look at the agenda. Uh, first, we'll talk about the structure, how test suites and the plans are organized in MTM. That becomes really important uh, from the planning standpoint. Then we'll talk about what are the different type of test suites uh, that can be created as per the need and the different states of test suites. So as far as the structure is concerned, um, in the previous session, we have already seen how to create a test plan. Now, when we talk about the test suites, test suites are going to be associated with test plan. Test suites by itself may not have uh, too much importance because when we talk about executing the test case, it's going to be linked with the test suite. And again, the test suite has to be linked with the test plan so that we can establish a proper traceability for a particular test plan. Coming to the test suites, uh, there are three types of test suites that can be created in MTM. One is static, requirement based and query based. As far as the static suites are concerned, these are static in nature. That means we, it has to be uh, added or updated manually. Coming to the requirement based, based test suites, for example, we have uh, five user stories or five requirement in a particular release that has to be tested. And if we want to establish a proper traceability, what we can do is we can actually create the requirement based test suites. Um, from the scope perspective um, or from the implementation standpoints, requirement based test suites are very well fit in when we have to evaluate or find the coverage against a particular requirement. Coming to the query based test suites, um, query based test suites um, grows dynamically in nature. Uh, the beauty of these suites are that we don't have to update it manually. We can uh, add the filter criteria. For example, um, in the first phase of uh, testing, we have 20 test cases as a priority one. But when we go to next phase, probably we add another 20 test cases uh, into the priority one. Now, if we create um, P1 uh, priority based one as a query based test suite, we may not have to update it every time. As soon as the test case gets prioritized as one, it will immediately be pulled into query based test suites and it will keep on growing as we move forward with the testing lifecycle. Coming uh, toward the test different uh, states, now these states uh, that we will be talking are only um, applicable to the test suites. Uh, there are three different uh, phases or states for a suite. One is planning phase, progress and completed. For example, when we design the test case or we add the test case to the test suites, that will stand in the planning phase. That means still the test case development is on. When it's reviewed, when it's ready for execution, then we can move that test, uh, then we can move the status or the state of the test suites as in progress. Once the execution is done and no other execution is required, then we can move that test case as, a, uh, then we can move the state of a test case as completed. Now, one thing to watch out here is these states are going to be uh, specific to the test suites. For example, if we have um, five different test suites in a particular test plan, so these states need to be set independently for each test suites. It cannot be overlapped or it cannot be, for example, um, we cannot make all the test suites as in, in planning um, at once. We can do that, but we have to do it separately. Okay, so let's quickly jump into uh, MTM and uh, we start uh, working on uh, the query based test suite. 
once again um, i request the if uh, you are you have not watched the part 1 please uh, go ahead and watch that that's mandatory and it covers the entire test planning which again comes becomes important so right now i'm going to work on the static suites right click on the test plan and uh, we'll find an option new suite now new suite is basically will be an static suite so i'm going to create a suite here and i will call as let's say and to and test okay or i can make these test suites modular also so let me add one more static test suite and i will call as um, login test or login module okay now i have added two test suites um, into my demo test plan let's go ahead and create the test case here so what i will do is i selected login module and here you see that is um it shows um, static suite type static suite and count of tests is zero because we have not written the, written the test case in order to write a test case for a particular test suite select that test suite and click on new okay so here uh, first uh, we see, uh, we have to enter the title of the test case so i'm going to write verify user login functionality okay this is the title of my test okay now here you see the iteration path in test plan um, session we have spoken about iteration so from here you can select the different iteration that your test belongs to so i will let it to be at phase 2 but you can always change wherever it belongs to then assign to now this assign to is um is actually linked with the owner of the test case it does not means that this person ots is going to execute execution can be done by somebody else and that we will see how to assign the test case to someone else for execution but here it means for example this test case has been assigned to ots that means this particular test case is going to be owned by this user if any changes has to be done this person is going to be accountable for now the next state is uh, the next uh, item is state so once when we design the test case it, it moves to a design state okay we will not see an option to change it because that's where uh, the workflow starts so first it has it has to go to the design state second we can also set the priority of these test case priorities are from 1 to 4 we can change and uh, we can put whatever we feel so i am going to make the priority as 1 <clears throat> now here on the right hand side in the detail section you see you will see an automation status as not automated now here you will see two options one is not automated and other one is planned for example we have written the test case and we feel that this particular test case needs to be automated then what we need to do is we will go ahead and change the status as planned okay and once the test case is going to be automated then once we associate this automation status uh, once this one once we will associate this uh, manual test case with this script this status will automatically be changed to um, automated that we will see down the line in this video series okay so for now i am not going to change the automation status because i am not sure whether i am going to automate this or not that we will take as a part of feasibility and will change the status accordingly now next one is the area path again um, this again comes from the test plan uh, we have select created the area path uh, from in tfs so we need to select it accordingly right now i have just one team project so it's populating one if in case we have multiple we will see multiple options populated here okay now in the steps we see two options here action and expected results now actions are basically uh, 
the instructions or the steps that we're gonna write here. <clears throat> so simply click here to add a step. I clicked and I will start writing my test. For example, my first step would be launch application. Expected result should be application should be launched properly. Then next step should be click on login link. You should be able to navigate login page. Third step, enter user ID and password. I will just put it okay that's fine and here should be able to enter the details in the desired fields and then click on login button user should be able to Okay, this is the uh, login test that I have written. Now I will go and click on this summary part. Here if you want to write some comments uh, for your own uh, uh, reviews or traceability or any important data that you want to uh, highlight, you can go and write it. Now tested backlog items. Here. Uh, we can link our test case to a specific backlog item. So let's see. I let's say I want to add it to my user story. So I'm going to find um, my user story. So if you remember the work item ID, you can do that, or you can browse. So let's see. I'm going to browse it by login. I may have a user story by name as login. So let's see. If, okay. So here you see ID number four. That's a work item ID. Here you see a product backlog item. That's the user story that I have um, written in TFS. Let's select it and click on OK. Again, OK. Now here what we have done is the test case has been linked to a product backlog, like product backlog item or the user story. If you go to links, again you will find the same link so this is the way by which we can um, actually implement a, we can establish a traceability of a test case with respect to the requirement if you want to associate any screenshots or any other document uh, brds you can go ahead and click on add and write a comment and it will be available for you which you can actually refer when you work on the this particular test case now coming to the associated automation this is the tab where um, you have to associate your manual test case with the automated script okay once you do that now these all are auto populated fields uh, there is no manual intervention here so how to do the association that again um, we'll see over the period of time how to do it once we do that association this status is going to be changed to automated okay all right so this is how um, we need to write the test case now my test case is done save and closed okay now here you see as soon as we created a um, test case you can see inside this the priority configuration testers iteration path and all that okay so this is um, okay now one more thing uh, <clears throat> here states right we are talking about the different state now this suite uh, right now is under development phase so that's why we are seeing here uh, process status in process once we are done with this it will um, get changed to a different state okay all right so that's uh, pretty much for this thanks for watching 
um, I request uh, to go ahead and uh, subscribe our channel for the latest update on uh, coded UI and MTM.